of it. Hi, this is Aaron Booker with Varva.com. I'm here with Prashant from the Azure team. Yep. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the big changes that have been announced here at WPC. Yeah, first, th first, thank you for the opportunity. I hope uh, you know it's been an exciting uh, conference for you. Uh, we made uh, two big announcements uh, yesterday. The first big announcement was around the fact that we are uh, we are on track for commercial availability at the Professional Developer Conference uh, in November later this year. Uh, it, it was us reiterating that Windows Azure, SQL Azure, and the .NET services will become generally available at that point in time. Uh, the second key announcement, and probably uh, you know more important one in some ways, is uh, the fact that we announced the business and the partner model for the Windows Azure platform. Uh, over the sev past several months, as we've been in the community technology preview, we have obviously heard consistent feedback that you know the technology is great, but we want to know how much it costs. So, uh, and we've gone out and talked to a lot of customers and partners. Uh, and what we found is that there are three kinds of uh, uh, consumptions, uh, uh, consumption models that uh, customers and partners want. So the first class of uh, audience is, you know, I am a startup uh, company that's building an application or a service. I can be a value-added reseller. I can be an independent software vendor. I'm delivering a consumer software as a service. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I don't necessarily know what my demand is going to look like. So I don't want to invest in capital of buying uh, the hardware, then the software, then the database, then having to manage uh, that and, the and then build the application or service. And then after I built that application or service, I don't have insight into what my demand is going to look like, right? Mm -hmm. So I could turn out to be not successful, or I could turn out to be hugely successful like Salesforce. And then I have a huge set of uh, challenges, right? So for th that community, we are announcing the consumption-based pricing model, which is, think about it as the pay-as-you-go, pay-as-you-grow uh, model, where you only pay for what you use when you use it. Then there is a class of uh, partners, especially systems integration partners and value-added resellers, for whom the unpredictable consumption-based model does not work. So imagine you're a systems integrator or a value-added reseller doing custom application development work, and you're responding to an RFP uh, from a customer. Uh, let's say it's city of Chicago, let's say it's Ford Motor Company, whatever the case might be. Uh, and Ford Motor or whoever the customer is wants to take a particular scenario and they want to move it uh, to the cloud. Uh, you know, the systems integrator or the value added reseller wants to be able to respond to that RFP with a proposal that is fixed price in some ways. So we are enabling the subscription-based uh, pricing model that allows the systems integrator or the value-added reseller to actually develop their application, uh, develop the application that the customer wants, model out what the consumption is going to be, and then bid on a fixed price basis to that customer. Obviously, there is a third class of uh, uh, customers and developers who buy software from Microsoft today through the volume licensing agreement. So, you know, these are customers who have annuity-based agreements with us. And they would want that uh, their purchasing experience with the Windows Azure platform is as consistent as their experience is today with buying software. And so we have committed that over a period of time, not at professional developer conference, but at sometime in the second half of calendar year 2010, we will have integration of the Windows Azure platform components into the volume licensing uh, agree volume licensing engines and agreements. So, uh, in a nutshell, uh, you know. Uh, that that's the big pieces of announcement that we made yesterday. I mean, there is specific pricing that we've announced for each of the services. Uh, so there is compute uh, in Windows Azure storage and automated service management. We've announced pricing for that. Uh, we've announced uh, pricing for the SQL Azure component. Uh, and we've also announced pricing for the .NET services component. We have uh, very, very com competitive in that respect. Uh, but those are the big pieces of announcements that we made yesterday. I know I used to have a, a small web hosting company, and that was the hardest thing when you're talking to a customer and they don't know what their volume is going to be. And of course, they hope for the best, but you're trying to 
get a, be a little realistic with them, right. more than likely they won't be quite as successful as they hope they might. So you're really going to set up load balancing and you know build lots of boxes out for an app that might not be quite as successful as they hope, but yet have that headroom to grow. So this is a great announcement for, for partners. Yes, I think it's an uh, enormous opportunity for partners. The other thing that we're doing as part of the announcement is if you're a, a partner as part of the Microsoft Partner Network, you automatically get a 5% discount on the pricing. Uh, additionally, uh, you know we allow you as a partner to actually have a direct billing relationship with your customer. So we don't, uh, we, ena we truly enable value-added resale on top of the platform. So imagine you are an, again, and, you know, value-added reseller or systems integrator or an independent software vendor that has built an application, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we will allow you to bill for that application to the end customer that includes the IP that you've already have, which is the, the software that you built, as well as the actual uh, infrastructure. So we don't aspire to, per se, have a direct billing relationship with the customer. It, it will obviously depend on customer choice, mm -hmm. uh, and the customer will ultimately decide whether they want you know two bills for that service or one bill. Uh, but it, it's truly an opportunity in that sense uh, from uh, from a partner perspective. Well, what we think is that you're understanding our marketplace because really the customer wants one throat to choke, one product. They don't want to be having fingers pointing at each other. And if we're billing the customer, we own the problems and make it better for them. And so it really just works better. Yes, and that's absolutely right. And we will then work with that partner on the back end to make sure that you know the customer, from a support standpoint, has a super seamless experience as they you know if they do have a problem, you know they like you said they have the one. Next to choke and they go through the you know go through the proper triaging mechanism and you know mm -hmm. it doesn't get random and ad hoc mm -hmm. uh, and we do realize that it's been a uh, it's been a core tenet of how we bought the business model to market well thank you so much for recognizing the value of partners because partners really do make these things happen and I think you're really getting that because the multiple bills to customers really confuse them and, it, and frustrate them right look I think you know Microsoft generates what 95 percent of our revenue through the channel we've always been uh, a channel friendly company and we'll continue to be a channel friendly company we think that most of the opportunity in the cloud services space which Gartner predicts is going to be 150 billion dollars uh, by 2013 uh, most of that opportunity is in the partner ecosystem we as uh, as the technology provider of the platform will have some component of it but a majority of it is in the systems integration in the value added resale in the uh, application development world uh, versus in the the provision of the core uh, infrastructure, if you may, in a lot of ways. Um, the the other key thing is we. This is where we, as Microsoft, are super unique vis-a-vis -vis other other competitors in the marketplace. Uh, the power of us having the developer ecosystem, combined with you know. 350 or 1,000 partners in the Microsoft Partner Network and the technology innovation that we bring to bear with what we've designed on the platform is pretty unique. And I think, you know, there's nobody else uh, out there who does software on-premises, has developers in the ecosystem that are, you know, three, four million plus and understands the developer space, understands how to work with the channel, the complexities thereof, as well as the different types of partners in the models that need to be enabled, and a reach into the enterprise customer space. Uh, so understanding the ability to deliver the service, the experience, and you combine all of that, I think is pretty compelling. Well, what you're saying is what we as partners believe too. Customers don't buy products, they buy solutions. And if we can give them that solution and we give them a rich, robust solution with tremendous support from partners and Microsoft teaming together, customers are gonna be thrilled with their experience. Absolutely, right, ultimately we are a software company. You know, for us, uh, there are different ways we can deliver software, mm -hmm. services, and what we are announcing with the Windows uh, Azure platform is, a, is an ability for us to deliver software Software and services uh, in a different manner than putting it on a DVD and shipping it to a customer, right? Ultimately, it's all about the customer experience uh, that we want to enable through the rich solutions that the partner ecosystem builds. Well, I, I see us uh, definitely succeeding together, partners and Microsoft. I think this is a, a great move forward, and uh, the, cloud's, the cloud is such an opportunity, and we're going to be successful together. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity.